there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Here with a few of my locals here. We're going to go over our F&M Spotlight. I uh, usually I do this before Friday Night Magic, but it was too late coming back from my sister's graduation. So just hurry and sleep up a deck. And I went 4-0 with this deck that you see in front of you. I, as Talmadge puts it here, I was the least rogue out of everyone here at the, the shop. There is a couple people that do play tier one decks, so I was kind of metagaming against both Mardu and the uh, Snake. The, the uh, Snake Windy Constrictor Walking Blista. So this is, I just was scouring over some of the Sahili decks and Marvel decks, and I, I still, I'm still under the impression that there isn't any better card in standard than Rogue Refiner at the moment. It's hard for me to play a deck without Rogue Refiner. So I thought I went back to Teamer, uh, just the Sahili lit, uh, Sahili and Felder less kind of uh, Teamer build, uh, which is trying to get a, a, a Chandra ult. Because if, if you've ever played against Sahili or played Sahili, you know how many games you win with Chandra just getting the board clogged up with Whirler, Virtuoso, or Rogue Refinders and the Servant of Conduits. What I really like about this deck too is the ability for it to switch gears. And you are playing kind of the, the mid-range or mid-range role or control role at the first, and then out of nowhere you can just switch gears. Uh, so I just played a lot of two ofs and three ofs here. I knew what I wanted. I wanted the core shell to be the Attune, Servant, Whirler, Virtuoso, Rogue Refiner, and Chandra. And then, of course, Hardened Lightning. And the uh, Hardenest Lightning, <laughs> close enough. Um, and the other kind of slots I was messing around with. So Incendiary Flow was a, a metagame choice just because of Scrap Each Grounder. It was, you could say Magma Spray, but I'd like the ability to actually go to the face with Incendiary Flow. It did win me some games by redirecting towards Planeswalkers or just flat out killing my opponent. And two of was the right number because we do have the four Harness Lightnings and two Incendiary Flows. It's just better than Oath of Chandra. Even though we are running six Planeswalkers in the deck, I don't think you get enough value out of Oath of Chandra without it being able to be bounced by the Felidar Guardian. The Aetherworks Marvel was kind of clunky in the main, but it did some work. And it often did get cut because my sideboard was the Ulamog route. So we have the four Ulamogs. You bring in the Ulamogs, the Spring slash Mind, and our Spring 2 Mind. And the other two Aetherworks Marvels and the Nissa's Renewal. That's kind of the, the energy package that you bring in if you are going against those control-based decks or just other mid-ranger or value decks. You need to go over top of them. And Aetherworks Marvel works insanely well still with the Ulamogs. So Chandra was good all night. Harness Lightning and Sentry Flow. The Removal Package, the Whirler Virtuoso clogging up the board. And I decided to go Bristling Hydra. This card was really, really good with Grass of Darkness still everywhere and Unlicensed Disintegrations everywhere. And then Glyph Keeper. Glyph Keeper didn't work out as good as I, I expected, but it actually got sided out a lot because the majority of decks I faced were mid-ranger aggro. And so the Glyph Keeper, the game that I did get it out though, it was really, really good. Um, I think I ended up trading with a, a, a Heart of Crown and then recasting it and then my opponent couldn't kill the second one. And it it definitely finished the game very, very quickly with other like Whirler Virtuosos and other other certain the comments and Rogue Refiners. So I, I'm still mixed feeling about this card. I really like the card. I think it's underrated at the moment. Glorybringer was an absolute house in this deck. And I think that even though you can't fill it our Guardian it, uh, often the games, the, the turn that I cast it, it was it was game over. It killed a it killed a Kalidus. It killed a Gideon. It mm -hmm. killed um, it killed a lot of cards. The turn that it came out with the uh, exert, and then uh, it was game over just by the removal, and then have to wait a turn. Who cares at that point? So another card that was surprisingly really really powerful in this deck was Nissa. This card, you you never know how often you can get this for eight mana in this deck. I mean, if it goes late and I was casting it for two immediately or for three or for one. So for three mana, immediately scrying two and then just start using the zero and hitting Whirler Virtuosos or Servants or Rogue Refiners or more lands. And it was, it was very, very good. Never cared about getting the negative six because all the time that I had a Nissa, I wasn't didn't need the position to actually uh, utilize this ability, but I'm sure that this can become a, a great finisher as well in the deck. So teamer energy is alive and well. Is it unbeatable? Absolutely. It's it's without the combo, it's very, very fair, I would say. And 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm so far I'm loving standard. So the decks that were kind of in our little small tournament we had, we did have a a Walking Blissa Winding Constrictor deck, and we also did have Mardu Vehicles. I mean, cut and paste right from the the top finishes. And then I have a, a few other gentlemen here. I don't think you can see Talmadge in the in the window, but he they're gonna explain what they played. I think Zach played the just a red black like red black burn. Um, route and then we had we had another person play black white zombies so even though black not the blue. the oh yeah splash and blue wasn't he but he, there wasn't the, the greatest tier decks in here but there was enough to give me a sense of of how this deck performs and th i think this is the deck to beat still at 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 this point did very well against i, I played against mardu in the finals did v extremely well against mardu um, with the uh, Harness Lightning and Incendiary Flows coming in perfectly on time, with the Rogue Refiner and World of Virtuoso clogging up the board, and Nissa was and Glorybringer were very good in that match. So against the uh, one mid-range deck, and we'll, we'll show you Talmadge de deck in a second, which I, I faced, the Ulamog, uh, turn 4 Ulamog on one of the game, uh, off the Marvel, and the other game it was, what beat you, is it Chandra? Yeah, it was Sean. No, it's harness. It? No, because no, it, oh, it was Glorybringer. It was Glorybringer. Yeah, they killed Cal, uh, Cal, uh, Kalidus, and then it was uh, from there. So. Yeah, I just didn't have anything that game. I ended up like Kalidus, then this, or then Lilianing it back. With, yeah, it wasn't good. So, anyway, so the sideboard, I have some Mardu Hate with the release of the Gremlins, another Glorybringer, and two Manglehorns. Those are really, really good. Tyler Striker I didn't really have against any matchups because I just didn't feel like it was good. Uh, a lot of people had, like, Shocks and those sorts of Grass of Darkness Fatal Push, and so Tyler's Tracker just wasn't a card that I cared to, to, to put in. It's the most vulnerable out of these. Bursing Hydra was super good all night, and again, I didn't see enough matches for Glyph Keeper. So I don't know if I'd make a, any changes to this deck. I think that it's it's quite solid. There's definitely some options uh, to run instead of cards here and there. One little shell that I'm definitely thinking of is cutting the red and then going into black because the black can then get... Uh, I still think that Gaunti is, is extremely good, and at that point, if I think I was going to go into black, I would run Fatal Push or Grass of Darkness instead of the Harness Lightning and Cindery Flow. And then the Demon of Dark Schemes is insanely good with Ishkana to just keep recurring back in like a Marvel shell. And I've played kind of those lists in the past, and they do really well. The problem is that I quit playing them as they couldn't beat Sahili Combo. As Sahili Combo had that just one turn ability to finish whereas i did not i had to grind out my opponents so um I, ulamog's still really good in the sideboard of or if if you could i mean it's it's depending on how you want to run the main versus side you could you could right off the bat put the ulamog aetheric marvels then this is renewable in the, the spring mind and have the bristling hydras and the glyph keeper glory bringers in the sideboard that'd be kind of the package in but i just thought that uh, in my local meta, that it would be better to proactively be more of a mid-range, more of a board clogger than and only bringing the Ulamogs versus the relevant matchups. So anyway, that is my list. I think we're going to start with Kenyon because you saw his deck yeah, two days ago? It was yesterday. Yes, wow, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yesterday we were working on the... It was the Harp Harvest Season. season. Yeah. And this is the list. We don't have the sideboard here. Uh, but this is the list that Kenyon ran and starting off with like blister paws and loam dryads with crypt with rights, Eldrazi sky spawner, anointed procession, eyeless watchers, drowner folk, brood monitor, and Nyssa, and then decimator provinces. So Kenyon didn't do too hot with it. It's a little rough. <laughs> so what worked and what didn't Kenyon? Well, I see like potential for anointed procession because I see it could work, but at the same time, I feel like it felt a little awkward. So the anointed procession just didn't yeah. get enough value? It, it felt a little awkward. I feel like maybe if I run a fourth one, it would be a little better, but it just it felt a little awkward at times. Yeah, in this deck, I think Panharmonicon would easily be yeah. as good. We were saying that, but then we were also saying uh, we wouldn't get the effect off a of blister pod. After, off a of blister pod? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, white wouldn't... I don't think that's enough to actually have the splash white. I mean, the yeah. white, though, the scatter grows were easily cycled. However, um, I did think about like at some point splat like still staying in white because I also thought about trying Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah, how that would work. Displacer can go infinite with uh, Anointed Procession or Panharmonicon with uh, Flickering Brood Monitor. And how did Throne of the God Pharaoh work out? It actually worked better than I expected it to. Like, um, 
So, with Throne of the God Pharaoh, it was... I'm trying to explain, like, thinking of... Well, see, it worked really good, except for... I just did... I didn't have very lucky runs. Like, whenever I would get stuff to pump with creatures, like Harvest Season, uh, Throne of the God Pharaoh, it was always, like, right after somebody, like, removed all my creatures. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like just those unlucky draws. Like, um, Yeah, I think it's a little out of place in this one now looking at it. I think Eldrazi yeah. Mimic wants to be... Or not Eldrazi Mimic, me Metallic Mimic Metallic wants Mimic. to be in this slot. Just yeah. for the ability for it to just explode with... Um, yeah, and else. then you wouldn't have to go, like, Loam Dry. I know that with the har Harvest Season, it, to me it just seems like there might need to be a bigger payoff. Well, and and it, Throne yeah. is kind of competing with uh, Harvest Season to actually get as much payoff as possible. So, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, like, early development of the deck, like, I tried without decimator and it worked fine like with throw at the but um basically how i felt is it didn't really like have enough mojo alone by thrown and like with that being the win con of the stack it just seems um kind of what talmage was saying to me when we were talking about it of he explained to it as um cute in other words just really like flimsy and very like it relies if, if you rely completely on the deck um not on the deck. On that card, um, it's really a crapshoot getting into the card, and right now there's a lot of artifact hate. Um, yeah, we we're just saying it just seems really flimsy, and so um, I added the decimator to hopefully, um, you know, kind of give it that mojo in case I can't get thrown, so then I can just ramp into a decimator. However, I did run into a couple problems with decimator. One, um, I just wasn't able to get the mana to get Decimator out, and it was just in the way. There was one time where it was just in the way out of my draws. I wasn't getting mana for it, and it was just a problem. It was just in the way, so I threw it out the next game, and um, I still got obliterated because I was getting I was going against Black Red Burn, so there was already like crazy removal to get rid of my creatures. And then another problem I ran through with Decimator. Um, is because where I run the strategy of Cryptolith right is I'm tapping my creatures to pump into stuff, but Decimator is a creature where I want untapped creatures. And it seemed like whenever I was able to get into the mana to get Decimator out, I would have no untapped creatures for it to be any good. Yeah. So it really, really clashed. Yeah, I think that the the, the awkward pieces is Harvest Season with this is with Cryptolith right and, and Throne of the Fer God Pharaoh kind of crowding that space too much. So here is, I'd probably cut the Loam Dryads, cut the Cryptothrites, cut, cut the Throne of the God Pharaoh, and put some more aggressive drops here, um, or just things that, that put out more tokens, like the go full on the Adrazi Sky Spawner, or the Scion Summoner here, and or even into black at that point for the Catacomb Sifter, and that way you're still pressuring your opponent, and the Decimator uh, can be a, a much better win con. Uh, coming down and sacrificing like a brood monitor or even an eyeless watcher. That's what I like about the decimator provinces. You sack an eyeless watcher and that's four mana towards it. And at that point you, you, you'll have the mana usually and enough tokens. So yeah, I think that there definitely is some merit to this deck. You just have to figure out the, the right pieces. It's something I'm, I'm going to try to brew around. I still like this combo a lot. The crypt with right throne of the God Pharaoh, but I, the zombies is where I want to and really want to try with it. Crypto with Right and Lone Dryad in the deck, where I decided to splash white, it really, really helps with that because I had no problem at all that at any time I got anointed. Even if, because I only splashed like a couple whites in for the deck. But because of Crypto with Right and Lone Dryad, it, it was never a problem that whenever I got anointed, I was always able to have the mana to get into. I always had the mana fix because of that. So it really saved me in that case. But other than that, yeah, it really clashed. Yeah, I don't know. Anointed Processions probably could just be another card too, because sometimes when it that's what I realized with Panharmonicon in some of these decks is when it when it did when you got like a Brood Monitor, uh, but I mean at that point you could have two Brood Monitors for the same card. I mean if you could chain off some cards, Anointed Procession was worth it, but eh, probably not in this particular one. I I think just going a straight Eldrazi Blue Green Eldrazi 
fill up the slots with sky spawners, fill up the slots with, with the scion summoners, fill them up with Eldrazi mimics would give this more of a punch. But yeah, we'll keep you updated with uh, Canyon's deck as time goes on if he decides to play it again. And I will be brewing with Throne of the, of, of the God Pharaoh, probably Crypto Thrite uh, in another... I th I still think that with zombies it, there's some pretty pretty insane things you can do uh, with with the combo. But anyway, we'll get on to Talmage's deck. He ran an Abzan. Would you run Abs? What do we call it? Mid -range. Mid -range. Abzan mid range. There it is. And we don't have the mana uh, slots in here at the at the at the the moment. the moment. But Talmage is my good stuff player. He always runs Gideon no matter what. Every it's my card. Frontier, it's my card. frontier, or modern. No. Or you, no, you, modern. You, I'm gonna do it modern. You're gonna play it modern. You're gonna have to come close to the mic so people can hear you. So I'm here, play it modern. Here, I think he's going, trying to go like a delirium to try to get Ishkan off. So the vessel, uh, fatal push, um, grass of darkness, collective brutality. So removal here. Uh, Ch Chandler initiate and grim flare at the two drop slot. Tyrus tracker, Ronis, uh, Oketra, and Gideon's. Gaunti, Kalatos, Liliana the Death Majesty, uh, Ishkana, Prepare Fight, Noxious Gear Hulk. Uh, what worked and what didn't, Talmage? Um, the Chandler of Initiative, it didn't really work too well. It was kind of always awkward. It was either really too small to block or the mana was just kind of awkward for it. In that case, I'd rather probably have a Sylvan Advocate or another big creature or something that would accelerate me, like grapple with the past or something with to initiate Delirium a bit easier. And I felt like my four mana spot was really jammed with Gideon's being the main. And then Oketchu just kind of seemed like a partial Gideon, like a wannabe Gideon kind of. And my curve always seemed kind of messed up. Like I'd hit ones and threes and then nothing for that. And that's where I'd get blown out was like against a zombie deck. or. Yeah, you know. I think definitely need more removal main, I would say, to, to utilize with Grim Flayer. Uh, so you want to get Grim Flare out, and then you have to answer Grim Flare with it, which then leads you open for a Tyler's Tracker or, or Gideon, or you get a Grim Flare out, and then you can start answering everything they put out, and then you start to get that uh, kind of pseudo card draw going because you get a you get to filter the top of your library. I think Traverse fits very well in this deck. Uh, Traverse maybe over Vessel. I know Vessel does get you the enchantment, but with this deck. I think Vessel works very well. That's what got me Delirium a lot easier a lot of the times. Traverse yeah, doesn't work as well with that. Walking delirium. Blista, though, you could run it. You could run some combos of both of them. I mean, I'm not against Vessel um, at all. It's 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 an okay choice, for sure, to get Ishkana out. But how'd you like Liliana's Liliana Death's Majesty? I loved it. I played a Gaunti one game. I stole Kenyon's and landed possession. Yes, he did. And then I had an Ishkana in my graveyard. I flashed back my Ishkana, and I did that multiple times, and his, I just had about a his, thousand spiders. Yeah. His deck became literal cancer at that point. Yeah, these... The, Luana seems to work perfectly in a Delirium-based strategy with Ishkana, as it does... It can put two cards in the graveyard. This is kind of the deck that, I, that we, were, we were talking about that Anointed Procession actually might yeah, want to work in. And we actually even saw it, because when he took it uh, out of my deck... He actually got to see, and yeah, like I say, it worked out really well. Gideon's were amazing. Everything. Well, was... Gideon with Anointed Procession puts out two. It was really yeah. good. Um, and then the Truth Teller, I, the one four drop Oketra, she worked pretty well with it. Um, yeah, Oketra, Oketra was pretty easy to get online with this this card, even, or with this deck. Even Liliana worked really well with the zombies. If I was trying to pump her up, give me a lot more blockers to use. Um, I think the problem with this deck is just it was too like scrambled. It seemed like so I'd need to go like more. Yeah, this it needs fine tune for sure. That's I, I was thinking some other cards that could go in a, a, in a deck like this. The um, never return could oh, work yeah. with anointed processions. The uh, let's see, where's some other ones we talked about with oh, Nissa? Just yeah, just Nissa flat out Nissa could work with this deck. The oh, the oh, oh. puts out plant tokens. From other the four boards and um, from other yeah from other four boards with dark. The Dark Salvation. Dark, Dark Salvation. Dark Salvation would work pretty good as one of the... Just probably a one of. But Anointed Processions, that just seems very silly with uh, with Dark Salvation. Uh, also, Tireless Tracker works with the Anointed Processions. It does put out double clue tokens, which is nice later on. So, I don't know. I think that the this Abzan-type 
shell. I mean, Absinthe has proven itself in the past, especially during the Siege Rhino days, with Gideon's and and just having like a good curve. That's been Absinthe's strength for the longest time in Standard, is having a, a basically answers for everything because you're in green, white, black. So you're going to have better creatures. Normally, you have the white, green creature, uh, which is those. Usually white and green are the creature-based decks, so they're going to have the advantage on the creatures. You're going to have the best removal because you're in white and black. Uh, and then you're just going to have a lot of utility with... Uh, green is a very good utility color, so is black. And I, I definitely think there's a lot of merit for this particular deck. Um, I still think the uh, Traverse of will go great in here because it can go get a bunch of... like a, a, Going down to like a one of Noxious Gear Hulk or just a one of... Uh, well, it can go get a, a god, for example. Ronus didn't work in your deck at all, right? It was awkward. Yeah. I had him out like one time, but he was very awkward. Yeah, I can see him triggering off Grim Flavor under a uh, Grim Flayer <laughs> under the perfect condition, but he was awkward. Yeah, he's gonna I would rather and see out like when I was going against him, like because all this other crap that was going against me, Ronus was just you know kind of sitting there. Yeah. Everything else was going at me, and Ronus was just sitting there, not really doing much. I uh, I actually played a. Uh, Bunch of matchups versus Ronus with the Whirler Virtuoso, and it just couldn't get through. It can give another thing trample, but eh, at that it's point, there, there was nothing. I think this fits in maybe red green energy, and that's about it at, the, at this point. Uh, there are some, I've seen some lists that have had Ronus in and have 5 0 already in the leagues, and they seem okay. So yeah, it's Ronis got merit. I think it's Ishkanaz time to shine again. I, it really standard seems to be wide open. I think all of the we've seen fevered visions come back. The like the emerge decks come back. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before Ishkanaz comes back to shine because Ishkanaz was always pretty good against Mardu, and it's I mean it's great against a uh, blocking walking bliss to to or um, the. Uh, Heart of Quran. It's also great at blocking Gideon. It's great at blocking even cards like Noxious Gear Hulk. It's a mess to try to attack into the 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 spider tokens. And Anointed Processions. There's another one. You get you get six tokens yeah. out of it. I don't know. And Liliana. When I played against Liliana, there's a few people that, that did have Lilianas. This did seem to be a very very powerful card with the returning creatures back to your, uh, the battlefield. It's like a reanimation spell that sticks around. So Liliana was one of the best cards I had in there. It just came back. If I like, they finally fought through all the Ishkana tokens, I'd just go Liliana, bring it back, and then it was just all over again. It was one of the better cards in the deck. Yeah, she starts at basically six loyalty with a two-two black zombie. If I mean, if or uh, when you pop it out, like I said, it's a reanimation spell that it stays back. And just another tick up, and then you can reanimate something else. So, I don't know. There's our list. I hope you enjoyed this kind of Friday Night Magic. Just wanted to start showcasing, now I'm at the store and we have an editing computer, some of the other decks that people are playing and their ideas. We do, at this store, really try to put an emphasis on people brewing decks. Um, sometimes we can get very, very Ish. spiky here. There's a, there's <laughs> definitely a few players that, that, that you know, and, and nothing against it. You know, well, we all know that I, I don't like the... Um, spike. yeah, the kind of the, the spike mentality when it all costs brew just are not brew. Just take a, a deck off the, the internet. Um, what I don't like is when people play them and then complain about playing them. <laughs> you know, this is a perfect time to brew your own deck. Everything is wide open and there are a lot of powerful cards that were really, really getting, um, stifled from Sahili combo. Any mid range strategy could not compete right now and i think i think we're in a very very good spot because standard has all the pieces of being a self-regulated standard what i mean by that is you have a very very aggressive deck in the far as far as mardu is concerned if they really want to go a very very aggressive either red black or the mardu old shell at the beginning of the season um then it there's also the mid-range decks where you can go so many different routes with jund like jund energy works really well um, even like red green energy, you can either go aggro or mid range with that. Uh, you still have the Whirler Virtuoso energy decks. Uh, I think Delirium's going to come back. Uh, you have kind of red deck wins is super super fast, or like my red white human deck that can be very explosive. And I even think like Metalwork Colossus decks uh, are are going to be uh, that might actually be harder now with all the artifact hate. But uh, there there are just with with extreme. Uh, on this extreme ends of aggression and torrential gear hulks, and then a very healthy uh, mid-range type 
strategies, I think we're in for a very, very good standard. I like to say that my favorite standard ever was Innistrad Return to Ravnica. And yes, there were tier one decks. Yes, there were, by the, the end of the season, we had a deck that had the best win streaks and, and was probably the right deck to play at a tournament. But as a brewer, even till the very end of Return to Ravnica Innistrad, I still felt like I hadn't really found out all of the combinations and synergies and played around with all the cards that were even playable. I could come with the homebrew and be successful. And that's something that hasn't occurred for quite some time in Standard. Uh, we had the, the Rhino that was just the best card in its slot. You couldn't compete with Rhino decks or you had to go you know, over Rhino with more control with Jace. Then we had Coco decks and it were just really, really tough to try to justify playing anything but Collected Company. And then we had, of course, these past few seasons with Emrakul and uh, White Blue Flash, and then the Sahili and Mardu. And it just seems like if you've joined Standard or joined Magic the Gathering in the past uh, few years, you're missing out of really, really good uh, standards where brewing is viable. It's something you can do and be successful at. And I think with that, with Feldar Guardian out of the way, I think we're finally to that point. I could be wrong. Maybe these Dynavolt Towers, Trenchal Gearhole decks are going to prove to be too much. And then this pendulum has just swung too far the other way. The control is going to be oppressive, but I highly doubt that. I think it's very easy to combat those type of, of strategies uh, with the arsenal that we have at our disposal from all these pretty good sets, in my opinion, from uh, Battle for Zendikar on. I mean, maybe even Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher can have a, a comeback. Anyway, Ooh, that was a good deck. just some thoughts. Uh, we'll keep brewing around. Uh, I'm going to put out a top 10 list of cards I want to brew with with uh, with uh, Almond Cat, and we'll get to it. I'll try to do a deck of each one of those. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.